everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Stassi. Thank you so much for being here today. I thought I would do something a little bit different this week. And instead of having a simmer spotlight today, that I would have a, um, a podcast dedicated to 25 things that you think you know about The Sims. And I have the best co-host in the world, my fiance, Mr. Stassi, aka Jason. So thank you so much for coming here today. Yeah, I'm very excited because I won't know some of the things. I was looking over the list earlier, which I probably shouldn't. So some of these things I learned in the last few minutes. Honestly, when I was doing research, there were things that I didn't know that was in this game. So you know what? Let's let's start it off. Number one, uh, the architecture game. Uh, when The Sims was first developed at when it was in, you know, first stages, it was actually meant to be an architecture game. And what it would be used for was teaching future architects how to build a university and college. That is what the original Sims 1 was originally going to be back in 93. I'm glad it wasn't, though. Could you imagine? Yeah, so that's how I'm sure a lot of people played it. There's, I think, the vibe I get is, unlike me, who found the build and the buy mode to be more intimidating and just live in the life mode, um, that, that's a... Uh, definite way that some people play the game yeah you know it's funny because i was thinking about this this morning when i was printing off my list that in grade nine that we actually used the sims in school um for in home ec to teaching how to cook and to clean and how to build things and how to run a home and i remember there was like one computer in the classroom and we all had like 20 minutes to play which I was fine because like I played had been playing Sims at that point for like many years. So I was like, oh, cool. And I remember teacher, my teacher being like, oh, like this got this new revolutionary game called The Sims. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, Miss Foster, you got hold up. I've already been doing this for like 10 years at this point. I was uh, never assigned that The Sims is work. So I clearly went to the wrong schools. <laughs> I mean, did you, okay. Sino, did you have to take home ec in grade nine? Nope. That is some sexist bullshit. I had to take home ec in grade nine. We had a choice between business, tech, which is basically wood shop, yeah, and home ec. And my uh, my high school is maybe a rougher one uh, than most than like others went to. So there was a. Uh, There was a lot of people going to the tech, um, and that's the one I took. Um, and then, you know, not to be sexist or anything, but every girl would take home ec. I wouldn't really take uh, woodshop or business. And then kind of, you had your more businessy types take business. And then I realized afterwards that maybe uh, taking woodshop was pretty good if I wanted to do something more hands-on but uh business probably would have actually suited what i do now a lot more yeah and then home ec would have suited the third part of the thing so <laughs> maybe instead of choosing those should be uh things that people learn a little bit of each maybe split the the course until you learn a little bit of business a little bit of home ec a little bit of tech and that way we're not kind of sequestering who learns what Look at you coming to play with actual adult responses. I usually just make fart jokes and people laugh at me, but I love that you're coming in here. I agree because I didn't have to take business either, but I had to take home ec. Anyways, number two, did you, do you know about the 1999 E3 kiss? Okay. This is what I didn't know until today. And then I had to fact check the shit out of it to ensure before you guys call me out. The Sims was a development during this time where there was an extreme lack of representation in both genders, ethnicity, and sexuality in, in different games. Nowadays, the series is without doubt the most inclusive one with tons of creative freedom and uh, something for everybody. In the start of the 1999-83, sorry, E3, um, they were playing gameplay demo of two female Sims had fallen in love and had uh, and fallen in love with each other and and engage with the kiss. Uh, the kiss had not been planned by development, but it helped skyrocket the game to huge success, which giving it the spotlight it so truly deserved. I didn't even think about that, 
when I read that today, I was like, holy shit. Cause like, think about back 1999, like that was so unheard of. I, I can think when I saw the one there, I'm like, the Sims is the first kind of thing I experienced that was an LGBT Mm -hmm. thing, like, which say, you know, sounds different than the world we live in now, but to, to like back then it might've just been like, other than Ellen DeGeneres Mm -hmm. and a couple of like people on movie and TV, there wasn't that representation at all. And I remember thinking that was, this is, Again, any any time where there's like a point in my life where it's like, how am I going to react to this? Where I've been like, cool, like I like how I fall on the side of allying always where I was like, oh, I was like, it makes sense because there's relationships that are same sex or different. Mm-hmm. And it makes sense that the Sims game had that. So I thought that was like, it's very different because I've played a number of other video games where you're the guy and, and you have the, the wife or the girlfriend kind of thing. And um you almost couldn't imagine it like the problem is even these days I feel like if you had an LGBT character there'd be unnecessarily backlash but we're talking about something that happened in the 90s where it should like you know people got to catch up to where the sims was and where we were in the 1990s Mm -hmm. these days so it's good that the sims was a leader in that and I think that was um like kind of knowing the designer and in, in the early like maxis thing, that's something that they probably said if we can't do this in our game mm-hmm. we're not releasing the game which is funny because um like i i agree with everything you just said now this year 2022 my wedding pack stories uh came out and it was banned in russia because on the cover it shows two females getting married and there was a whole uh, backlash and um, petitions. If we, if our, our simmer friends in Russia can't play, we can't play. So I found that fascinating after reading that today, that back in 99, they did this, they broke records. And now in 2022, we're talking about, oh, it's banned in Russia. And then mm-hmm. after that, I learned that a lot of these games are banned in Russia for anything same-sex marriage. So mm-hmm. I was like, hmm. Yeah, we do speak from a very like Canadian perspective mm-hmm. where we realize that a lot of places around the world, they like wouldn't even release the game. But, yeah. Like, that's my goal. All right. Anyways, you know what's not fucked up? Number three. Number three. Um, actually, kind of is a little fucked up. It was poorly received at first. So when the Sims like actually came out, uh, they didn't think they were going to sell more than 100,000 copies. It was very not, it was so different at the time. It was not as massive a success as it was, but the game luckily rebranded and went through a lot of changes to make it a little bit more marketable because what they were concerned of, that was going to be a girls game, mm-hmm. which at the time there really kind of wasn't a lot of girls games out there. Mm-hmm. Um, there was boys games um, without a doubt. Like, I mean, think about it, this is 1999. Like the girl games I can truly think of is like the horrendous Barbie games that were out there. But there was nothing that was like directed for girls and boys at the same time. And that's when The Sims rebranded and it was just as an anybody game. And because they were able to do that, that it wasn't just for us to play. Like you were like guys and boys wanted to play as well. Yeah, it's uh they definitely, I think, nailed their audience. Like, look at the lot, like there's really not that many game series at all that have that lasting power. So they uh, kind of from out the gate stuck to what they're, they're doing and, and did it well and had a lot of uh, loyal people because of it. Mm-hmm. I, I agree. I mean, a lot of the Simmers I interview, I mean, you, you play the Sims, like the original Sims. When I talk to people who are like, you know, like five and they don't know what the Sims one is because they weren't alive. I have to refer to it as The Sims 1, Mm -hmm. but any OG player knows it's just The Sims. Mm -hmm. It's like anyone who's like, yeah, I like Star Wars. I like episode four, but as originally, it was just called Star Wars. Anyways, fact number four, Uh, the combination of two and 3D. It was hard to describe what The Sims looked like because they weren't 100% sure when they wanted to start it if they wanted to do a 2D or 3D. Um, We know looking back at it now that The Sims look petrifying um in the original sims but at the time they had considered it being 2d instead of 3d 
I uh, remember the big distinction between having a not so great computer was because Sims 2 was fully 3D and it had its own camera mm -hmm. that my computer couldn't render that. But when you get to the flat plane and you, the classic, like I, I also played like not so much the Sims game, Sims series though. So I'm used to SimCity where you have the four rotations of the screen kind of thing um, or other games pretty much where you have the four angles that you can rotate to. Um, and that became, again, a staple. And uh, I remember even Sims 1, just like you're trying to get the camera angle so you can view something and you couldn't do it. So you could like move a lamp or move something mm -hmm. on a desk. And then they added it in Sims 2, which is so great if your computer can handle it. Again, which sounds like a ridiculous problem these days because they don't even design computers that can't really that stuff so i know thank you for uh for starting us off at 2d so some of us could get into it mm -hmm. and then going to 3d to mod it like they they did that right off the gate they could yeah. have they could have done another sims 2 could have been 2d as well and then improve the graphics but they're like no sims 2 you could even get right in there with the camera yeah. angles too right so yeah as soon as they as soon as you do that your your graphics rendering really changes so mm -hmm. shout out to anyone that had this early 2000s like not being able to actually run a game which i don't get too much uh people relating with me like that so poor people problems is having a shit computer I told well, I told you that my story with The Sims 2, right? I couldn't play it right away for six months because Dan Zhu took me to the States to buy it at Target because there was an exclusive. Got home and then my home computer was not required enough. So I had to wait six months to almost a year before uh, we were able to get a, a new computer that I was able to play. It was my dad's computer that I would like get to play on. I got you, kid. I remember I was so excited for Sims 2. Anyways, you know what I'm excited about? This next fact. From crime to mime, um, in the original Sims, there was a, a career for, for crime, and there still is to this day. But in China, it was banned, so they changed it into mime instead of crime. And that's where the mime, mime career came from in The Sims. I had no idea of that. That's... Uh... That's funny, but again, I like that localization, but uh, yeah, it yeah. happens everywhere. A uh, famous one is in, no, I'm going to get this wrong. Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to remember something that's not real. I was going to say in Australia, the GTA games don't have blood, but that's super false that's fair i didn't come prepared that's okay if it comes to you though you can scream it out anytime mm -hmm. cool next one the sims forever now this is a really fun easter egg for anyone who's played the original sims and who plays sims 4 so if you go on your computer on the sims 4 and you want your you know your, your sim to have fun there is a sims forever and what your sims are doing is that they're playing the sims 1 in Sims 4, it's called, it's gonna, it's called The Sims Forever. I noticed that pretty pretty early on when I was watching Kelsey and Peach, okay? Mm -hmm. When the Hunter Baby, that like they were doing, I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. Because you could see like like 2000s Bella Goth and like the Go-Go Dancer cage. Yeah, I remember seeing it as a selection and laughing. I was like, it's The Sims 1. Right? I was like, thanks, callback. Um, next fact, inspired by fire. Now, I'm going to read this out. So if I stumble, I'll try really hard not to stumble. Uh, Will Wright, the lead creator of The Sims, is the living proof that something bad, that bad things that happen can also lead to good things. After losing his house in a fire and having to buy a furnished one from top to bottom, he was inspired by creating a game that would simulate this process. This, was, this is how the original architecture-based version of the game was created in order to help players create comfortable and visual pleasing homes in the Sims world easily. I saw that and I was like, Willie, call me. Because is that why you made everything on fire in the Sims? Because it was like a, it's like a Disney experience with how I felt that I'm like, like everything's always on fire. I mean, I'm, I'm very sad that he did lose everything, but I mean, at the end of the day, he was able to create one of the best games in the entire world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That is one I knew. And it uh, is one that kind of 
makes you think that if you're, you know, hopefully it never happens, but if you did have to rebuild, where would you prioritize? Because uh, it's hopefully something you never have to do. Right. You can just have to worry about doing it in the game. Mm -hmm. It's really sad. One of my, um, at work, uh, one of our vendors uh, had a house fire a couple months ago. He lost everything inside. And he did had a good fund meeting, raised over fifty thousand dollars. And he was able to, you know, get everything he needed and a new apartment. So there are still good people out there, guys. Anyways, next fact. Hardest game in the series. Um, that is without a doubt true. Um, compared to the original Sims, um, and what Sims 4 is, I find Sims 4 extremely easy. Um, you can basically become an actor in two days. Um, there is no super skill. Like you can just read a book for two hours and now, and now you're an astronaut. What was very different in the, the original Sims. It was a much harder, it was a harder game in the series. Um, your needs would continuously go down extremely quickly. Uh, there were, there were cheats for it, but they weren't as easily known at the time of like what there was, um, Everything was constantly, as we said, always on fire. And you, like you made a grilled cheese on fire. You made a salad. It was on fire. You stepped in the tub. It was um, broken. Like it was continuously always, always broken. Did you, did you find out of all the Sims uh, versions you played that the original Sims was the hardest? Yeah, I think I'm, uh, me and you, where we differ is playing the Sims versus like, debugging it and, and building all the final items so as someone that didn't do the cheat codes and played the games for the games i yeah i found one was uh what was so exciting to me in sims one was working a few days to get the skills up at a job and getting a promotion he gave a totally unrealistic uh display of adult life where you develop your skills and you work really hard and you do harder work and you don't get a promotion or a raise. So minus, uh, you know, I think the Sims one is way more accurate compared to like maybe three or four where you're getting promotions every other day and it's yep. easy to raise the skills. And um, it's, it was kind of nicer to actually build a career kind of maybe felt harder to, to jump to different ones. And then I forget, get between two or three or four it might have even been two or three where like you really could aspire to hit certain levels at certain like career paths I think it might have been two because you could have like your wants to be like I do want to get to level eight of this career and and stuff and I'm sure that was another one so mm -hmm. yeah Sims one uh fun and then if I don't really get challenged enough by a game I think that's maybe some of the reason I didn't love four as much there wasn't there wasn't much where I felt it was difficult to do if you can just do it it's not gonna pull me in it's not gonna keep you playing yeah, and I think that's why all these Sims creators had to create all these challenges so they could actually feel challenged while doing yeah, these careers. Right? Oh, yeah. I think it's such a different thing as people are like, how how else can I do things or do differently? Or how can I tell a story? Yeah. Versus originally it was kind of like, I'm going to try to build a really big house by earning all the stuff. And... and then, well, because, yeah, that's more original because... I mean, obviously there was Rosebud and stuff, but there wasn't like Motherload, which gave you like 50,000 and like one drop. Rosebud was a thousand, right? Um, No, there are definitely cheats where you can get like millions and however much. Yeah, because, okay, no, it's coming back to me. Wasn't it like put value in here and then like X and then something and, and then that happened. But I always do appreciate how we played. That's how I know that he is like the sweet baby angel who was like, didn't want to cheat. Or I was like, I want the most expensive house out there. And I want to have all the expensive things with the heart-shaped beds, which we will talk about those in a moment. Um, which brings me to my next fact was the 100-day bonus. Um, there was a small, wholesome Easter egg in The Sims, which gave credit to the original developers of the team in the first game. If your, ho if your household made it to the 100th day, you received... A congratulation message, which stated that the next 28 days that you would see messages from every each developer. I thought that was really cute. I would ship my pants if that like that level of detail was in there now. Yeah, that's interesting because I've never seen that. And I definitely had some long uh, houses. Yeah. I played the same ones. What did it say? Like a developer message? Yeah, developer message. 
Huh. He would get 28 of them for the next 20 days. So one a day. Yeah, I'm going to check that out because. Right? I was like, I never did that because I would kill off my fake boyfriend of the week. That's why I know I love you because I've never killed you off in essence. But all my other boyfriends, they live in the bottom of the pool forever. <laughs> uh-huh. Anyways, now on to the next bit of facts. Okay. Simlish was inspired on a real language. Uh, William Wright, the game developer, uh, feared that certain phrases in English dialogue would become very robotic. And rather than uh, challenging tasks to marketing and translating into several different languages, he decided to put it into his own language, which is solely based off of and takes features from Ukraine, French, Latin, Finnish, English, Fiji. Uh, oh, you're going to get those last two for there, honey. <laughs> Am I? Cebuano oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and Tagalog. Tagalog. That last one is well known. That second last one. The second I one. I can't say I've heard of. Uh, yeah, I, I've never heard of that one either until today. But I did know that it was taken off bits and parts of different languages. It was kind of like Dothraki in Game of Thrones. Same idea, taking bits and parts of different languages. There are people out there that do speak... Um, fluent simlish i am not one of those people even though sometimes i do get asked because i do machinimas and they think that the machinimas are in simlish and they're in english my friend mm -hmm. i can barely speak english as you guys can tell on my this podcast and i definitely can't smell either uh anyways moving on um Oh, these are Sims 2 facts. These are preparing for my my next one. Um, oh my gosh, this is awkward. Oh yeah, this this one actually made me laugh really fucking hard. Um, take a quick second here. Okay, the first object that was ever implemented in The Sims was a toilet. <laughs> You would be surprised to know that the first object ever implemented in The Sims was a toilet. When the developers made the first prototype in 1993, the game creator, William Wright, only included one sim sim single object in The Sims to interact with, which was a toilet, which is so funny, in my personal opinion, because I think that in The Sims 4, all the toilets suck. So where's William? Because I want to get that some original toilets in there. Yeah, toilets are pretty like fundamental, like pretty, pretty low or high on the hierarchy of needs that you would need in life. So I think uh, let's get a toilet there. It could solve bladder, obviously. Obviously. Uh, comfort as you sit in there. Yep. And if desperation gets the desperate, uh, hunger. Anyway. <laughs> So I shouldn't have been laughing that hard. That was too funny. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> Anyways, on to the next fact. Did you know that Santa Claus was in The Sims? No. He was. So he, he was part of The Sims Living Large expansion. Now, the only way he would show up is if you had a Christmas tree, a fireplace, and a plate of cookies out before midnight. And he, if he'd come, he would bring you a very luxury present, usually like a TV set. But if you placed the cookie plate, but the cookies were spoiled, he wouldn't come. <laughs> uh, I I think I actually ended up doing it once, if I remember correctly, because I was at Casey's house and I remember we were playing. It was like, I thought it was a fever dream until, you know, when you have like those like epiphany moments where you're like, oh, that was real, Um, was today when I was printing off the sheet. And I was like, I remember. I remember being like, Casey, Casey, there's Santa. There's a Santa in the fucking game, which I didn't swear at that time because she was very against swearing. So I was like, I think I said like forking or something. Mm. Um, Casey, there's a, there's a Santa in the forking game. I mean, doesn't that sound, isn't doesn't that sound, uh, you know, polite? Anyways, off to the next one. The campfire ghost. Did you ever experience the campfire ghost? I feel like I have seen campfire ghosts. Okay. So for anyone who doesn't know what the campfire ghost is, um, you had the ability to purchase a campfire, uh, which was added in the Sims house party. Uh, Sims could gather around it and do various activities, which one was telling a ghost story. Uh, 
it tend to be very popular to grab to gather people around. However, um, if you wanted to actually see a ghost, it could actually happen. How you were able to do it is your sim had to have a high charisma skill. Um, and if they were able to tell the story, the ghost Greenbeard may randomly jump out of the flames and scare your sims, therefore making the story real. I don't know if you even remember there was the campfire thing, but now I feel like it's ringing a bell because there wasn't too much in the uh, outdoor category. Uh, right? Uh... I I remember, I was thinking the same thing because like it wasn't until The Sims 2 when I started doing stuff outside and even that I had blocked it out and I didn't realize it until I started doing Sims 2 Machinimas last year that there was like outdoor stuff, but I know a lot of that could have been CC. Could you imagine? And like The Sims 1 just being like, oh, there's campfire. Fucking ghost. Green beer just fucking pops out of nowhere. So you're trying to figure out what the game even was at that point. Trying ghosts, what? But we were kids you back can't then. Click on the ghost. You can't control it. It's just yeah, it was basically a non-playable character at that point. Mm-hmm. Nice NPC. It was the last realization that games were more games and more like, oh shit, there's real fire right now. And they go, ah, it's fine. Ah, it's, 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 it's fine. Speaking of it's fine, did you know that the Loch Ness monster had it was in a Easter egg? And it's actually, it's, it's also an Easter egg in The Sims 4 as well. When you click, when you hold your cursor over Windenburg, the world, you see the Loch Ness Monster. Ooh. Yeah. Um, so the title screen on the original Sim is out, undoubtedly a familiar site for long-time centers. It offers a value, uh, sorry, a view of the neighborhoods while uh, serving as the main menu. Every Sim player understand will know if they booted up the screen and the lower left hand of the screen next to the wooden sign there's the legendary Loch Ness monster minding his own business hiding in plain sight no I I I went to go find it today and it's true yeah I was like holy shit I never would have noticed that because again I'm a kid and I was all like yo I can play the sims I can have a fashion show I can I can use the beds which I didn't know vibrated until like two weeks ago I know. I know. Now there's another one that I had no idea of, which was the Grim uh the Grim Reaper doorbell prank. You remember that one? It's like Nikki Niners and runs yep. off. I do. Yep. Oh my god. That's why I love you. I have not heard someone say Nikki Niners in like a hundred years. Oh, like not till the Grim Reaper did. I've uh, right. All manner of spooky objects that came in making magic. Um, although and though um, holiday actually has existed in the game, you may purchase jack-o'-lanterns to simulate the season of Halloween. If five or more pumpkins are placed on the lot, um, you might experience an unexpected visitor. During the night, a random chance of the Grim Reaper will spawn to your lot and he will um, nonchalantly walk to your front door and ring the doorbell. After that, he books it off and uh is faster faster than he can without breaking his little bony legs i was like holy shit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Grim reapers got stuff to do while people are out here surviving all right you're fucking you know it's a little trickster a little trickster he is anyway speaking of trickster did you know there was a bear in the sims did not know about the bear claire the bear uh, the Sims franchise has a fair share of strange non-playable characters. Claire the Bear was added in the Sims Hot Date and can can count herself among the oddest list out there. Claire often appears at night, just like the bears in real life. Will shift through your garbage and look for food. It's annoying, not to mention strange, considering uh, that she'd like to walk upright on two legs. I don't remember Claire the Bear, but... I did Google it today, and yeah, Claire the Bear was uh, Claire the Bear was real. I wouldn't even know what to do if that happened. Is can you imagine if you're just like playing the Sims, you're just like, oh, there's a fucking bear, just you know, around. Anyways, off to the next one. Alfred the Butler. Um, was a was a um, he came with superstar, allowing players to live up to the lap of luxury. Sims could now become famous movie stars, recording artists, and fashion models. If Bridget the model uh, maid no longer seemed high enough class, that you were able to hire a butler. And that actually came back in The Sims because you can have a butler as well, like The Sims 4. Is that different than having like the maid or the house cleaner or my... Yeah, so there's a maid, there's a housekeeper, but when you become a superstar 
and the Sim Superstar, you could have a butler. And his name was Alfred Pennyworth. So clearly there was a couple Batman fans mm -hmm. in there. Um, next fact, the clown, uh, the, the clown catcher. Every fan in the Sim franchise is well aware of the tragic clown. Um, for some in for some reason, players who purchased the tragic clown painting, um, then they were just asking for trouble. When the Sims needed to drop too low, the tragic clown appeared to spread some cheer in the household. So if you had a if your sim was sad, the tragic clown would just fucking come out of the painting and just fucking cheer up your sims that is petrifying as hell i would burn the shit out of that photo yeah i avoided having anything clown related in my real and sims houses so i would have said mm, not that painting let's do that one that's got more environment points mm -hmm. no. oh, i can't wait to show you what's coming up in the next segment is creepy items from the sims one that people forgot about drunken sims i thought this was fascinating because i was just talking because it's just a bunch of simmer spotlights that are really coming out next year and we were talking about like the sims not super being like family friendly because a lot of it was like 12 plus 14 plus 16 plus 18 plus mm -hmm. um but when i was reading this today the sims franchise as a whole is pretty uh, family friendly experience unless you have mods which we do know mods do make the game better um, but the Sims have more question behavior. Um, in the original title, however, during this random uh, Easter egg, it, that's easy to miss. Anytime a Sim took drank too much, either at a bar or a punch bowl, there was a chance that they vomited a unique animation that was triggered for anybody who was drunk. That's how they were able to do that. Well, now it's like in The Sims 4, it's something fucking dumb like uh like feeling frizzy or something like that or feeling frazzled this means that they're drunk off juice because that's the only thing they can get drunk off of i mean there's alcohol but it's the juice bar but i definitely didn't remember that i mean if there was i've probably been like oh, they drank too much punch mm. okay to be fair when you were a kid did you ever drink too much juice and like puke it up uh I wasn't really a pukey kid. I got you. Think so, so I, I saved that for my adult years. No, nah. no, she's not a puker. Well, mm. 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 not from alcohol though. Mm. Well, then you hide it well because I would say I'm more of a puker than you are when it comes to alcohol. That'll agree. Oh fuck, I puke all the time when it comes to alcohol. One drink, think I'm a wizard. Speaking of a wizard, do you remember Miss Bone Hilda? Mm -mm. So Miss Bone Hilda. Uh, was the undead skeleton maid that was included in making magic. Once her closet was purchased, players no longer needed to uh, uh, pay for the fresh and bone cleaning service. In fact, uh, Bridges the Maid would actually not work again if you owned uh, Bone Hel Bone Hilda. Bone Hilda was just like this like iconic character that they actually just brought her back in The Sims 4 in the paranormal pack, which people completely lost their mind about. I thought that was pretty fun. I thought she was... I thought that was a, a fun experience to have Miss Bone Hilda. Um, now we're going to talk about items, mm -hmm. weird items. This is has, we're going to get into the list of like the super inappropriate that PETA would not stand for today. But this is the one that made me laugh the most. I'm going to try to read it out here, but it's small as hell. So um, the no tell motel bed. Do you remember that one? So it was this one. No. Right? Next, again, excuse me for trying to read this out loud. The font is like not AODA friendly, but uh, Simmons have always snuck off to secret, secretly satisfy their needs. Why not send them to the no-tell motel bed where they were able to experience a full night of fun and luxury? I was like, okay. But as a kid, you're like, oh, cool, it's a green bed. Yeah, it looks like really gross green. Right? And you're like, oh, cool, whatever. And it was $787. So I find that very expensive for a bed. What we can see there is old pride and true Mr. Mm -hmm. Vibrating Bed. But now you're going to 
We're going to talk about the weirdest items in The Sims. Starting off with something that I think is absolutely atrocious, and I never played it, even if I had, like, a big house, was the animal trophies. Mm-hmm. Um, did you ever play with them? I did. Oh, my God. They had a white rhino tr- like trophy head. Not knowing to how endangered that species is, I was shocked to see that. Not only did they have that, they had a moose head. And then they had a poor bear rug. Yeah, the rugs that were literally just skins of animals. There was a, there's not just polar bear. Yet. Pretty sure it's a tiger one. There's tiger one. There's brown bear as well. Yep. Um, yep. There's a. But it says foe, but the other ones didn't say foe. Just this one. And yeah, you can see them in here. I was just like. Yep, I remember that. I have only ever seen a bear rug once, and I was so uncomfortable. I was, it was my stepmom's sister's house who lives in Montreal. She had a bear rug and I was like, I can't sleep in here. So I slept in the guest house. That just goes to show you people who have bear rugs, they have guest houses. Anyways. Oh yeah, there we go. We got the zebra one. This is the one that I was like, guys, like, come on. The elephant foot trash can. No. God. Made from real elephant foot, which was in the description. Big hunting fans, I think. Yeah, I was going to say, Willie, what's going on? Now, this is what I was talking about with the crown, the creepy clown sculpture. Yeah, that's scary as shit. Yep, isn't that? Okay, for anybody yeah, who, yeah. this is what it looks like. For anyone listening to this podcast, um, it looks like. Yeah, don't Google it if you're yeah, listening. Yeah, don't Google it. <laughs> Pennywise will curse you for the rest of your fucking life. But so it looks like Pennywise going ah in front of a magic hat going ah. Uh, it was absolutely petrifying. Guess how much this fucking sculpture was? Ten grand. No, five thousand four hundred and forty nine smiles. And then last but certainly not least, I had these. Did you ever play with the cow print couch? Because I did. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, it was cow country sofa for thirteen hundred and fifty dollars. That sounds like modern day prices for couches, mm-hmm. not like Sims prices. Now, what about the uh, Rampa loop side end table that was an elephant? Looks like something, if that's supposed to be an elephant. Yeah, it was an elephant, and I would always put that as my end tables. For anybody, again, this guy right here. Um, For, for my podcast listeners, it is an elephant table with its trunk up, which means good luck. And it, it was a little end table, and it was white. And yeah, it was just these weird, weird items. Speaking of weird items, was there anything else that you want to reminisce about The Sims that you want to share with everybody before we go to the lightning round? I can't think of anything. I think we're good to go to the lightning round. Okay, the lightning round. Um, this is I I didn't believe this until I Googled it. The cow plant is very much known in the Sims world, was actually not in the Sims 1. It didn't appear until the Sims 2 University, the Sims 3 store, the Sims Social, and it was just put into the Sims 4 not that long ago. Um, another fact is the Sims 1 so has sold over 11 million copies. There's a, there's a lot of copies. Now, this is one. This is this is this, this is a slow lightning round one. So I remember the genies. Do you remember the genies? Yes. Okay. So in the Sims Living Large, the genies uh, would give the Sims two choices to wish upon. The Sims players had absolutely no control which choices that were offered. Um, these witch these wishes were had ambitious names such as fire and air uh which would occur the outcome wishes that could go wrong also um could happen but the genie in living large had no it was not particularly reliable for an example if you had a fire wish and it ended up being good a comfort and your your comfort and socials would be maxed if it was bad an object set fire on water, I would simulate a you would get a water fountain or a hot tub, or bad if it was bad, flood. bad was a flood. Yeah. You got it. Earth, all plants and flowers are healthy. Uh, all plants and flowers died. Air would summon a pink flamingo. Mm-hmm. 
Um, or if it was bad, you would lose, a, uh, sorry, summon many cockroaches. Work, would you would gain some skills. Bad, you would lose some skills. Leisure, summon a random entertainment or uh, recreational object. Uh, something fun would be set on fire. Money, would summon a money pot. Uh, bad, would summon un, uh, future bills. Love, would gain a love interest. L- bad lose uh lose relationship with somebody friend gain a new friend law uh, bad lose a friend now this this family one holy shit also guys sorry you're gonna be hearing fireworks it is currently diwali and we hear lots of fireworks which again i'm very happy to see that we live in a very diverse neighborhood where everyone is able to celebrate diwali to the best of their ability yeah happy diwali happy diwali, diwali everyone belated when you listen. we hope you had a good one yes absolutely uh family now listen to how um brutal this one is Mm -hmm. family gain a relationship uh gain relationship with a family member uh that would lose uh lose relationship with a family member if the sims had no family he or she would be scolded by the genie but nothing bad else would happen i think that's crazy could you imagine just like rub a genie you're like yeah i want to like you know get a rich and it's like i don't like you anymore Mm-hmm. that's some bullshit that was a risky high risk high reward genie yep it's pretty fun because i was like i i feel like there's some cautious times where if i was like say i was pretty poor and i couldn't really afford to lose something on fire then i'd say you know what i don't want this to be the to be the battle well, i guess it was it give you two choices and one was the good and one was the bad so yes and then sometimes we get a sweet item or a sweet like work if that one hit and you got a free skill yes please right um that i played the genies all the time i would waste all my working simoleons on genies because mm-hmm. you could so you could have as many uh genie lamps as possible um but you could only do a one a day so say if you had 10 genie lamps you could only do 10 wishes a day um next one dragons so um, I had my interview with Cookie Creative, which was my season one finale, and a lot of people were questioning, are dragons in The Sims? The dragons were in The Sims. Uh, dragons can be require- acquired as a non-playable pet, which will reside on your lot. Uh, functionally, they were very similar to cats, uh, though they did not add to the family or the full anatomy. Dragons are hatched from dragon eggs, which were purchased at Vicky's Vampirus in the Magic Town in the 49 McCoins. Vicky's car also sold dragon treats, toys, which allowed you to take care of the dragon. There was no limit to how many dragons you could own per household. Do you remember dragons? I had fucking no idea the dragons until Cookie Creative told me. Um, we're getting down to the last couple of facts here. So there are eight expansion packs in the Sims. There's a deluxe edition, hot date, house party, superstar, unleashed, making magic, vacation and living large um now out of personally out of all of these i think making magic was the best which one was your favorite out of all these um when it comes to expansions i guess uh probably have less of a perspective there because i uh, played the base game uh mostly okay um, but I think I had the deluxe one for Sims one, and that came with Living Large, was it? Yes, it was. Yeah, so Living Large is the mm-hmm. only one I had. Living Large, I think that was also a good one because I did a lot of content for this game. Mm-hmm. Um, the Sims was released on February fourth, twenty. Sorry, I was gonna say twenty twenty two thousand twenty zero zero twenty zero zero. So like this game will be twenty three next year, like because i just posted a reel i'm like if this doesn't make you feel old that this game is now legal to enough to drink in the states mm-hmm. <sighs> again as as like a, a gamer you don't see a whole lot of series with that kind of lasting power like mm-hmm. even even if you look at something that seems like it's been around forever like a call of duty you now that started in like the the late 2000s early 2010s and even uh like sports i'm a big sports game guy where you have a lot of those started in the 90s so this isn't much uh much newer than some of like the longest standing series in history so it's pretty awesome that there and what's nice is they've done it without it's kind of funny that they release a lot of uh game packs and expansion packs as i say without that many main releases that they've only released four 
main games and they do it with expansions and they were kind of one of the original ones to ever do it that way Mm -hmm. now a lot of people you know uh, especially it becomes a have or have not thing where it's hard to afford a bunch of the the packs especially when they're full price of a game so whether or not the model's an actual good or positive one or not it's tough to say but i mean it was always cool to add to a game that i bought several years after it came out by just buying an expansion pack mm-hmm. now we have more like uh, like but that's before you could buy something online right and add it to your game yeah that's before any downloadable content was a mm-hmm. thing that's buying and installing another disc yep um it was a lot of fun like it felt like a whole new game in, in a world you already had so anyway sims uh sims 5 by the time it comes out are we gonna be at 24 years old oh mm-hmm. um Probably they more. haven't they haven't 100 announced that they they there is they still said there would be a couple more years i'm projecting 2025 would be the sims 5 potential base game like q3 so it could come out for christmas so it could be the hot christmas gift i can see them doing that um i'm a huge um believer that like ea releases so much content but like back then like i did i didn't realize until a couple years ago that there were no stuff packs or game packs or obviously not fucking kids but like there was nothing with the sims original game i didn't realize that i thought there were like other packs and stuff because that's when in the sims 2 then they had um stuff packs because i'm i can see two of them right here right now uh the sims 2 family fun stuff and the sims 2 holiday stuff so i really kind of feel like i kind of wish that the sims would focus on just like having more expansion like just expansion packs instead of having expansion packs game packs stuff packs and kits um we know with the sims 5 that if anything they're going to double down and bring back the sims 5 store um potentially you'll be spending uh one to two dollars on items i mean as marketing 101 how do you get people to spend more money one sixty dollar pack or sixty dollar one sixty one dollar items every time they're going to do the sixty one dollar items you'll actually get more money that way because you don't realize you're spending that much money anyways next topic uh the top 10 remembered items from the original sims i'm going to count them down number 10 the cake dancer slash go-go cages I did not realize that the go-go cages were stripper cages. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, there was also stripper poles in there. Yes. There's a dancing cage. Uh, Bone Hilda. We, just, we talked about her. Uh, number eight, the dance floor. Yes. Very iconic. Very fun. Lots Very fun. Um, the cheap green oven. That was everybody's. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Uh, number six was the genie lamp. Mm-hmm. Number five was the spiral stairs. So you're going to have this paper rip. Um, oh, no. Number four got removed. That's okay. Number, number f- four is a mystery. Item. Yeah, number four is a Choose mystery. Your item. Own. <laughs> number four is what you think number four is. Uh, number three was the mini bar. Number four was the aquarium. Sorry, number two was the aquarium. And number one was the heart bed slash hot tub. Yeah. I did not realize until I was watching a Sims video that the heart bed vibrated till like a couple weeks ago. Yep. Yep. Select vibrate. Because I remember that was like the net, like you could do some naughty stuff in the normal beds, mm-hmm. but that heart bed had like a full option. So I remember being like, true Casanova, my Sim is. It's got the heart bed. <laughs> oh my god that's so once again if only applied to real life uh i would totally get the heart shaped bed are you kidding me heart shaped king bed because i can't go i can't sleep with anything that's not king anymore Mm -hmm. any couple listening to this a king bed will save your marriage even if you're not even married yet it will save your marriage you agree to that king bed is like having your own bed yes. each and then having a middle bed they can meet up and like cuddle in the middle bed and then go back to your own side bed if you want it's very yep. yeah and we're not even large people at all so i can only imagine like people bigger than us getting into like a double or something hey and that was kind of life until recently so mm-hmm. um my co-worker and her husband 
uh, like to sleep in a twin bed when they're adults. I don't know how they do it. I don't know. I couldn't do it. I need all the space. We both, the beauty of king beds, you can both starfish. Speaking of starfishing, the Sims cast. For most of us who remember uh, the cast, it was not as customizable as it is today. Um, you were only able to pick from three skin colors, light, medium, or dark. That's uh, in an age well. Now, I mean, at least with Sims 4, there's like, what is there, like 250 skin tones, but even still like half of them are garbage, especially talking to POC Simmers. Like I wish like the POC Simmers were in the room where the decisions were made and they could actually sit down and make the proper skin tones instead of it needing being CC. Um, as well, you had two ages, adult or child. That was it. There was no toddler, a fucking infant, no baby. I mean, you can't do those anyways, but you can make toddler. I was going to say, you had a baby, but it was a background object and didn't actually show up as a sim, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, debug baby. I mean, that's still the way in The Sims 4. But I don't know if I talked to you about that in The, in the Sims 4 update. They're going to have debugged baby still. So baby that's in the corner and it cries and you like breastfeed it and you change your diaper. And now there's going to be infant where the, the child will crawl around and you teach it stuff. Then there's toddler phase. Then there's child. Then there's teen. Then there's young adult. And then there's adult. And then there's death. Which is a, which no is elder. elder. No, no. Which is elder. But you like you have like a day and a half. And then you're like, oh my God, my Sims died. Um, I'm not super fan of that. I've talked about it openly on this podcast the last couple episodes and I'm happy for the storytellers though that have need that need that aspect of the game I'm gonna be turning that off anyways um you could only choose between male or female um and you had 25 personality points if you do you remember those mm -hmm. so you had five categories that you could choose from which was neat and sloppy outgoing shy Active, lazy, playful, serious, nice, and mean. When you, if you can remember, when you used to make Sims in The Sims 1 or the original Sims, do you remember like what categories you would make the most? Yeah, I put a lot of points into nice. Yep. I don't want them being mean, so that took a lot of them. Um, I, pr I try to get outgoing shy to at least be more outgoing than shy. Same with active lazy. That was usually one that was at least seven or eight for active. And playful, serious, and neat, sloppy were a little bit less priority. Okay. Because I feel with the neat, sloppy, I felt that was the one I was most able to control. Mm. I could just click on stuff and clean it. Um, and I feel like that was also one where like if you had obviously two sims in one house, one of the one of the sims could have like no stats in meat sloppy and be fine because you just need one of the two to have it. And then same thing with active lazy, like I'd probably do one person that was more active. Okay. I can tell you mine right now. Um don't be shocker when you uh find when you realize what it was. Um me, I was, I was, I always made my Sims sloppy, outgoing, lazy, playful, and nice. Does that not describe me? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, um, once you were able to use your personality points, uh, players could change the basic of the head and the body on clicking on the arrow to the left and the right, and you'd be able to, you know, pick the Sims head and pick through the body. Uh, you would be able to pick the Sims age, gender, skin tone. For adults, there were basic body types, um, which in the Sims, it's four. It's really nice. We're able to customize it, but I wish we could customize uh, for our plus size Sims that it wasn't just all like beer gut because that's not accurate. Like some people are a little bit just, you know, a little bit more thicker, but it doesn't need to be right in the belly. Um uh, you could also choose from the Sims hair, hairstyle, and basic everyday clothing. Um, and the clothes category, obviously, it got more of the more expansion packs you had. Um, this is something that I didn't realize, that the Sims did not keep 
track of the family. So if you made two adult Sims, they automatically assumed that they were spouses and all children were siblings. When you created your own. I had no idea. And then last but not least, there was a study run in 2010 to find the original best expansion pack for The Sims. And without and it was making magic. And there you go. And that's your 25 plus facts about The Sims. I want to thank my amazing co-host today for coming on here and, you know, talking with me. You know, I actually got the idea because, you know, like, when we and Mr. Saucy, a.k.a. Jason, are in the car together, we always, I specifically always like listening to Star Talk. It is a podcast with Neil deGrasse Tyson, and they do these uh, podcast episodes of things you think you should know. And I was like, that would be so much fun for The Sims. So thank you for being my Chuck Nice today and having me, having the best co-host in the world. I was going to say the uh, Star Talk podcast has a subject matter expert and then it has someone that might have known the stuff before, <laughs> but they, they probably didn't. Are so you I'm happy to be your Chuck Nice? So yes, and you're the Neil deGrasse Tyson of Sims podcast. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm dancing on the dance floor. <laughs> yeah, you're dancing on the dance floor. Which I still think was an expansion. I feel like that's an expansion I didn't have because I don't know if I can make my Sims dance. Except I, for the... I'm pretty Sheesh. sure it was in Living Large or Nightlife. I think it was either the no, I think it was Nightlife. <laughs> you think I would come prepared? I did not. But I want to thank everybody so much for listening today. This is actually the segment I always leave open for anyone who wants to plug. You want to plug anything? Um, if you're not following Saucy J Sims 4, you definitely should because she'll know her Sims stuff. Oh, thanks, honey. Um, I want to thank you again for so much for coming on today. I had a blast. You're welcome back here anytime. You're such an amazing part in the soccer community that the world would not be the same without you. Oh, well, thank you. You're very welcome. Um, thank you for also plugging me um thank you so much for everyone and listening um please go check out uh the rest of my episodes uh don't worry next week i will have a round table uh with uh the tattooed simmer and sassmouth and we talk about console players because i feel like ea forgot for the last like five years that there's console players and i want to talk to actual console players and hear their thoughts and their hopes and wishes um, as well, I still release Rose Chronicle chapters uh, twice a week, and we're coming up to the winter finale, which I'm really excited to share with everybody. Uh, I've been working on it for a very long time, and I think uh, the final episode, or sorry, the final chapter of the year, I think it will be well worth it. Uh, I want to thank you so much to all my listeners listening to this podcast. It really does mean the world to me that I get to sit and talk about the, a game that means so truly and deals my heart, and I get to talk to so many amazing simmers. Um, I also want to thank um, all of the uh, guests that will be appearing on this season for the rest of the year. I cannot thank you guys enough for wanting to be part of this series. It really does mean the world to me. Um, I also want to like uh, to go check out Davenport. Um, we are both in it. Uh, he plays Richard and I play Amy, obviously. Uh, please go check that out as well. Please go check out the Reaper three. We're also both in this. Mm -hmm. You play, he plays Kane and I play Amy and we're love interests. I thought that was actually so much fun. And I've actually talked about that in, in um, great lengths of how it was, it was really nice to work with you because usually I do these by myself, like at lines by myself and it gets really depressing and a little sad. You're just reading to a screen, but it was really nice that we could read to each other. Yeah. It was very nice. But anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for listening today. Please go check out the rest of my podcast and have a great rest of your night, everyone. Bye.